The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Truly, we give honor to our God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are grateful to be in the house of worship again. In fact, if we are alive, we ought to be praising God. Just because we got that. Let us go into the house of the Lord. We're going to receive the opening now from the High Calling Baptist Church Voices of Praise. giving you praise because you are worthy. Thank you now, God, for allowing us this opportunity to worship you. Bless us now as we come into this service. Bless, oh God, the word as it goes forth. Oh God, bless this occasion. Have your way in this house. Do what you want to do for as long as you want to do it. And God, we'll be so careful to give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
came in uh, for the choir singing so beautifully and uh, hearing. And thank you so much for coming out, amen, to join us as we ordain the Reverend Sherry Jenkins. Amen. To God be the glory. At this time, amen, uh, we will ask Dr. Priscilla Williams to come. Amen. Please, because you're on the program. Amen. And Reverend James Gear, if you would, uh, scripture. upon the flood, uh -huh. who shall ascend unto the hills of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? Yeah. That's a question. He that has clean hands and a pure heart, yeah. who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. Amen. This, this is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thou face, O Jacob, Salah. The word of God, amen, for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for prayer. We ask that you bow your heads. Oh, Heavenly Father, the creator of our heaven and earth. God, we come this afternoon, God, because of all your many, many blessings. God, you woke us up to a brand new morning. We begin on a brand new day. With that tips of our limb and blessed in our right mind. So, Father, we come this afternoon, God, to glorify you first, God. Because you're the God of all gods, kings of all kings, and powers of all powers. God, we invite your Holy Spirit in right now, God. That you will come upon us right now, God, and fall fresh on us, God. That you will bless this occasion, God. So, God, you know about this occasion some 20 years ago when you birthed how you call in Baptist church. God, you said that you will add to the church, God. That we will humble ourselves and be faithful, God, in our faithful walk, God. So, Father, we ask that you continue your blessings this afternoon, God. For this occasion, God. And those that are here, God. Bless every family that is represented, God. But first, God, create us a clean heart, God, and a right conscience, God. That we may glorify you on this afternoon, God. Because, God, you are, you are, you are worried that you are glorified at all times. Even in the morning, midday, even this afternoon, God. You are worthy, God. So, Father, as you bless this occasion, God, we thank you for the blessing of how you call, God. How you said that you will add to the church, God. Thank you, God, for adding to the church. Bless every member of how you call. God, we pray for our leadership, God, our youth department, God, every auxiliary, God, and our first family, God. Thank you for the man that you put in charge here at how you call, God, as we continue to walk with him, God, as he walks up to you, God. So, Father, for this occasion, God, we ask that you bless Reverend Jenkins, God, who have been very faithful, God, in her walk here at how you call. Of a clean heart, God. Continue to bless her, God. Strengthen her, God. Bless this occasion, God. Then God bless her husband, God. That he would continue to walk with her, God, in her spiritual walk. Bless her family and her friends, God. And she continue to walk in her spiritual walk, God. Bless high and calling, God. As we continue to walk with her, God. Father, have your way, God. And God, we ask that you bless every church, God, that's represented here today, God. Oh God, we come to glorify you this morning, God. We come to give you praise, God. 
because you're worthy, God. Yes, you are. And thank you for your son, Jesus, who rose on the third day, God, that we might have life more abundantly, God. And we thank you for all your blessings, God. Have your way in this service, God. We love you, God. We adore you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Lord, I'm so glad that he 
sunny day.
this time we're going to ask Reverend Valerie Jones to come. She's going to give us a welcome. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. For he has done great things. Amen. Has he done anything for you? Amen. Amen. Then you ought to give him some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We welcome you today to the ordination service of Reverend Sherry Jenkins. We greet you in the name that is above all names. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. We praise him for being our God. Amen? Amen. We are here today to ordain and not validate Reverend Jenkins. For God himself is the only one who validates. However, we are here to honor one who has been diligent in the ministry of God, in preaching and teaching, and has invested many hours to the service of God, his church, and his people. Amen. Amen. So what is ordination? Why do we ordain? The word ordination comes from the Latin word ordinaire, which means to put in order. Ordination is being officially approved, consecrated, and given the power to do ministry or service in line with one's beliefs, teachings, and traditions. It's about relationship with God uh, mm -hmm. and allowing Him to have His way in our lives. It is a life-changing, sacred right that gives the ordained person a special spiritual status. It is dying to oneself and placing our all in the hands of God. Its main purpose is to give spiritual power and permission to carry out particular roles or hold certain offices in the church. It involves spiritual maturity, training, and support from our local church and church leaders. Ordination is visibility mm -hmm. and being a leader. It's about supporting, encouraging, and interceding for all. Someone must break the bread, visit the sick, preach the gospel, put out fires, and whatever is needed for the advancement of God's kingdom. Amen. It's about accountability. Uh -huh. The ordained minister answers to all, but is only obligated to God. Amen. Ordination declares to the church, I must love in spite of. I must live in God's grace, I must walk with integrity. I must live to celebrate and claim that he alone is worthy to be praised. Amen. Psalms 145, excuse me, 4 through 5 states, we must enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. We are to give thanks to him and bless his holy name. Today we thank God for Reverend Jenkins Amen. and pray God's blessings upon her. We pray for her grace and wisdom to carry out the task 
that he has assigned her hands to do. Amen. We thank each of you for coming to celebrate this milestone in her life. And may God richly bless each of you. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Jones. Amen. Before I get to the recognition of the ordaining council, uh, there are many ministers of the gospel who are in the building today. You have come to support this preacher, amen, as he is ordained. I ask that you would stand, please, so that she can see you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. And this time, amen, I'd like to offer the report of the ordaining, or the recognition of the ordination council. Ordination council was convened on January 20th, 2024 to examine Reverend Sherry Jenkins. Council is made up of the following pastors from the Higher Calling Ministerial Alliance. Pastor Patricia M. Wooten, pastor of the Higher Calling Baptist Church, amen, who is a charter member of the Higher Calling Ministerial Alliance. Pastor Vivian Langston, pastor of the Fruit of the Spirit Ministry, located here in Wilson, and also a charter member of the HCMA. Pastor Tammy Pender, Pastor of the Blessings of Christ Ministry, also located here in Wilson, and also a charter member of the Higher Calling Ministerial Alliance. Pastor Tawanda Moore, I believe that she is in the building. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Pastor of the Genesis Baptist Church, A New Awakening, located in Elm City, North Carolina, and a member of the HCMA. Pastor William Donald Bush. Amen. Pastor of my father's house, my father's business, Christian Church Amen. in Mathisville, North Carolina. Amen. Pastor Bush is also a member of the High Calling Ministerial Alliance. Amen. Pastor James Gear, Amen. Hmm? Senior Pastor of the Cedar Grove Missionary Baptist Church in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, and a member of the High Calling Ministerial Alliance. And finally, Dr. Earl Wooten. Amen. 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 Senior Pastor of the Mary Grove Missionary Baptist Church. And by the way, uh, I was also there <laughs> during that time. I am the pastor of the High Calling Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. And the founder and presider of the High Calling Ministerial Alliance. Amen. It should be noted that all these pastors gave their hearty endorsement and pastoral approval of the elevation of Reverend Sherry Jenkins. We are grateful to God for these pastors who made time in their busy schedules to help with the task of examining this candidate. At this time, the members of Higher Calling, the Executive Council, the deacons, and the ministerial staff like take this opportunity to officially and publicly thank all the pastors of the Ordination Council for all their help during the process of catechizing Reverend Sherry Jenkins. Can you give them a hand? Amen. This time we will have the report of the ordaining council by Pastor Kawanda Moore. Good afternoon, church. As a member of the Higher Calling Ministerial Alliance, I am pleased to stand before you this afternoon giving the report of the ordination council. After a predetermined time of study and training and having fulfilled the requirements to the satisfaction of the pastor and members of the Higher Calling Baptist Church, the candidate, Reverend Sherry Jenkins, met with the Ordination Council to be catechized. The candidate was questioned to ensure her knowledge of the Bible, her understanding of biblical doctrine, church polity, and church administration. The candidate, Reverend Sherry Jenkins, was also examined concerning her Christian experience and her calling to the ministry. Let it be known to all that the candidate answered every question to the satisfaction of the ordination council. Therefore, the ordination council gladly reports 
that Reverend Sherry Jenkins did accordingly receive the full, entire, and hearty approval of the Ordination Council and the Council's recommendation unto the work of the ministry, preaching the word, administering the ordinances, and performing all duties as well as enjoying all the privileges to which an ordained minister of the gospel of Christ is called and entitled. There you have received the report of the Ordination Council of the Higher Calling Ministerial Alliance. Amen. Now, as I am uh, Reverend Jenkins' pastor, I'd like to stick my chest out a little bit, <laughs> amen, and say I'm a pretty good teacher. Amen. Reverend Sherry on January 20th didn't miss a single question. Amen. So we are amen. grateful, amen, for her attention, amen, and for her commitment. Can the church say amen? amen. Oh, we in for a treat right here. <laughs> Minister Tedrick Jeffrey is going to come and offer a solo. says no twice, right? <laughs> what in the world is he about to do? <laughs> I don't generally disobey my pastor, so don't count it as disobedience. But I want to be here because I want the attention on God and not on me. Amen. See, I come to celebrate. Amen. I come to participate. But more importantly, I come to elevate. I come to lift God. I come to lift up the mind. Mind you are. Uh, <laughs> Reverend Sherry, my sister, requested a song. And everything in me wants to take it to another place. And everything within me wants to take us to another place. Because I hear God in this moment, same shift. I hear God in this moment, same openness, open for shift. And in that word, I hear the things that you've been praying for, the things you've been working for, are just a threshold of what he wants to do. Right. And on the threshold, as the door opens, welcome to the shift. Come on. Come on. Right. We and be clear, bro. And the shift requires that you remain knowledgeable of who he is. Yeah. Yeah. See, God is not just here for the moment. Come on. Come on. God has been here. God has been doing. God is known for doing. He has a track record of success. A track record of completion. A track record of finality. So if you don't feel it, no God ain't finished. If you don't see it, no God's not finished. If you don't hear it, no God's not finished because God don't leave nothing undone. He don't quit. He may take a day off, but it ain't over. He's just preparing you for the next day. He don't stop because the train is always moving when it ain't moving. You can turn the train off and everybody know the train still moving. God is not done. This is not the finish place. This is not the finish line. So in this moment, what I hear, and quiet, get ready. This is what I hear. You need to be reminded that God is 
your everything. He is your everything. He's not just here for your momentary pain, but he is your everything. He is what your future resides in. He is what your moment depends on. He is the health for your every other season. Mm -hmm. Say God is God is my everything God is God is my everything Yeah he's my joy He's my joy He's my hope He's my hope Oh he's my peace He's my peace
Amen. And since you loving on God so much right now, we're going to take up an offer. <laughs> Deacons are in charge. By the way, dig a little deeper. We're going to give it all to the candidate.
the church say amen, amen. again. Amen. 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 Certainly we thank God for your giving. Amen. I know that uh, Reverend Jenkins is going to be real happy about it as well. <laughs> amen. Again, the church say amen. 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 This time we're going to prepare ourselves uh, for the Word of God. We're going to ask the choir to give us a selection of their choice, after which uh, I will come back with the Word.
Let the church say amen again. Amen. How many can make that declaration? Amen. That for the rest of my life, amen. I will serve the Lord. Come on now, has it been so good to you? Glory to God. Truly we give honor to our God and to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a blessing it is to be here today for such an occasion as this. Amen. Amen. Can I start by saying that uh, Reverend Jenkins, amen, being ordained, amen, is not a matter of it's her turn to be ordained. Amen. It's not a matter of, of I've, I've, I've got the pastor's ear. Amen. But she is being ordained because God said so. All right, now. Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Uh, we look at her busyness in church and we look at all the stuff she do around yes. here. Yes. Amen. And, and, and she does it well. Amen. And, and she's very needed. Amen. But that's not a reason for ordination. Amen. 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 That's a reason for gratitude. Yes. Amen. Amen. But ordination is got is a that's a God thing. Amen. Can the church say amen? Amen. And we are very pleased that God has set her apart. Amen. For this season in her life. Amen. Again, we thank God for this host of ministers who Amen. are in the pulpit with us and in the congregation. Amen. Amen. I do apologize to Reverend Wanda Williams. I did not recognize you. But I do now. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Uh, First Samuel is where we're going to be preaching from tonight. Chapter 18. We'll just look at a few verses there. And we'll do it very quickly, if the Lord say so. And while you're finding it, amen, let me give honor to my wife, my whole bowl of sugar. Amen. 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 And we thank God for her in a very special way. First Samuel, chapter 18. We're going to begin at verse number one. Pray with me for just a moment. Father, thank you now for this time that you have given us. Thank you for this occasion. God, we need to hear from you now. So God, I yield unto you and ask that you would take this man of God, hide him behind the cross. You do the work here today, God, and let your will be done. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1. If you have it, say amen. 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 We stand when we read the word of God. Amen. amen. That is, unless you are incapacitated in some way. Start at verse 1. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit, with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Saul took him that day and would let him go no more home to his father's house. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was upon him and gave it to David and his garments, even to his sword, and to his bow, and to his girl. I'm going to stop right there. Would that you would turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh neighbor, it comes, it comes. With, the with the assignment. God bless you. You may be seated. In the text, we find that David has just won a great victory over the Philistine giant, Goliath. 
We all know the story, David and Goliath. But what is interesting to me in all of this starts back in chapter 16. For in chapter 16, David is announced and anointed king of Israel. And after this announcement, after this anointing as the king, the stuff that happens to David from that point, the major events that David goes through after the announcement is mostly adversarial. Circumstances and situations that David faced after his anointing as key as king are antagonistic. Now you would think that after God announces a promotion in your life, well, that the next events that go on would serve as confirmation of the announcement. Amen. In other words, you would think that after God has said to you and to other folk what he was going to do in you and through you, then the next thing that would happen would be a series of events that will prove to you and to the world that God really said what he said to you. Amen. Amen. But I find today that in the life of David, everything that happened after the announcement seemed to be in direct opposition to the announcement. In chapter 16, 17, and 18, and even in chapter 19, the things that David faced after the announcement of his elevation to another level, I mean, I mean, David was going all right before the announcement, but as soon as it was announced that God was getting ready to use him, David started facing some trouble. Y'all gonna pray with me? What I'm trying to tell somebody in here today is that every now and then the confirmation of your anointing is that hard stuff yes. that you have to deal with after you've been announced. Yes. Are y'all in here? Yes. Sometimes the stuff that you go through is not necessarily a sign that you are not faithful, yes. but rather that stuff that's giving you a fit is the very sign that God has anointed you. Oh. You, see, you see, the truth of the matter is that God allows some stuff to happen in your life, not because God is mad with you, but because God wants to mold you and make you into the vessel that he called you to be. Let me show you something here. You see, the victory over Goliath was a transition for David. And at that point, David moved to a new level of living. And the adversities that he faced on the new level was just part of his assignment. Are y'all praying with me? How many know that it's never easy to stay on a new level? Yeah, it's one thing to get there. Oh, but once you get there, you'll find that it's not like being at the old level. The new level always takes more out of you and more from you than the old level did. In other words, because you were faithful at the old level, God moved you to a new level. And because you were courageous at the old level, you were elevated to a new level. Your courage to stand for God when all your friends were doing their own thing, amen, that caused God to move you to a new level. Your courage to show up when you knew you were going to be talked about. Your courage to do the right thing and speak up for God when nobody else wanted to hear what you were saying. It was your courage and your faithfulness that got you to the next level. But it's going to take character to keep you at the new level. There's a whole lot of us who have what it takes to get to the new level. But they don't have the character 
to stay there. God help me, God help me. And I believe that one of the reasons that so many believers never experience the fullness of God is not because God didn't have that much for you, but it's because you don't have the character to walk in what God has for you without messing up the glory of God that comes with the new level. I know I'm out there. But maybe the reason you are going through what you are going through is because God is so committed to your destiny that he's taking the time to develop your character. So that when he drops you in the place that he's prepared for you, you will be fit to stay there. Thank God again, God. Yeah, God loves you too much not to give you a chance. So God allows adversity to come your way to develop your character. And if I were you today, I would change the way that I think about my troubles. Because the Bible says that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What I'm trying to tell you is stop saying that you're struggling. But rather think that you're going through character development. Stop thinking that you woke up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. You're just going through character development. Stop thinking you got trouble on every side. You're just going through character development. Because I found out that if you think you are struggling, then you will struggle. If you think you are in trouble, you're going to have some trouble. Oh, but if you think that is character development, then you're going to hold your head up and say, fix me, Jesus, fix me, like you said to me. Wait a minute now. I got to move on, but is there anybody in this house who will boldly say, I know I've been living right. So what I'm going through must be character development. I know that the mess I'm in, I'm not in it because I've been so bad. So it must be character development. I know what I'm dealing with is not because I've been unfaithful or because I've not been praying. So God must be developing me. And since I know I'm in character development, I'm not going to get bitter. I'm not going to get mad with God. I'm not going to drop out of the church. But instead, I'm going to give God a high praise. I'm going to thank him in the midst of my adversity. Because I know that God is working on me. He's working in me. And he's using this adversity and hardship and my own mistakes and my own failures to develop my character. And I don't know about you, but I choose to give God praise for taking me through the valley of the shadow of death. In the text. I want to show you just a couple of things from there. I guess I'm going to stop, Sherry. Is that all right? <laughs> First thing is, don't try to go to the next level with old baggage. Amen. You got your Bibles open? Yes. At verse 2, it says, From that day, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return to his father's house. Look at this, y'all. In chapter 16, David was anointed, but he stayed at his daddy's house. In chapter 16, David was chosen to play for Saul to relieve him of an evil spirit. But he went home to his daddy's house. In chapter 17, David went to the battlefield to check on his brother. But notice, he left there, or he left, he got there from his daddy's house. In fact, in chapter 17, verse 15, the NIV reads, But David went back and forth from Saul to tend his father's sheep at Bethlehem. In other words, David was going forward and back. Amen. Forward and back. Yes. David was splitting time 
between what he was and who God was making him to be. Are y'all in here? Oh, I find today there are a whole lot of folk who are dealing with the struggle of splitting time between who you used to be and who God called you to be. You know what I mean. Uh, uh, some of you went to work, something happened that rubbed you the wrong way, and so you made up your mind that it had to be guilt with. But who God called you to be would not let you handle it the way that you think it should be handled. So you transform your God called God anointed self back to who you used to be just for a moment now so you can handle that situation the way you think it ought to be handled. You are splitting time. But look at this thing. David's time was being divided. But now he had reached a place of transition and he's forced to separate himself from some people and from some things that he was used to. Good God Almighty. He could never, he couldn't go back to tending sheep. He couldn't go back to where his family, he couldn't go back to his father's house. And what that says to me is that David was forced to let some things go. Things that represented his comfort zone. Good God Almighty. David had to let some stuff go. Listen, some good things. Now we know that we ought to leave those folk alone who don't mean us no good. But David had to leave his family. Now I struggle with that. But finally, I got a revelation. And the fact that David had to leave his family says to me that there are some good things in our lives, but God only put some of them there for a season. And we cannot make the mistake of trying to make stuff permanent when God only meant for it to be temporary. Well, y'all a hard crowd. God separated David from folk and things that he was familiar with. Amen. God separated him from the people he depended on. Because at the new level, God wanted David to depend, to depend only on him. The whole phrase were productive. The whole relationship were fruitful. But God separated David from those things because at the new level, those things were going to distract him. So David had to tell his daddy that as much as he loved him, he can't come home no more. And what we have to understand this evening is that in order to stay at the next level, we not only have to learn how to handle disappointments, but we also have to learn how to handle disappointing people. Good God Almighty. The reason why some of us can never get to the next level is because we are too scared to disappoint folk who we have held dear to our heart. Yeah. Oh, but I need to tell you today that that's something that comes with the assignment. Yeah, you got to reach the point where you say to yourself, let them say what they want to say. I've got to go higher. Let them call me what they want to call me. Let them try to make me feel bad about where God is taking me. But I've got to go to the next level. No, I'm not trying to be stuck up. I don't think I'm better than anybody else. But I can't let them distract me when God is trying to elevate me. No, I ain't mad with nobody. I don't dislike anybody. I don't think I'm better than anybody. But I'm determined that I'm going higher. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. I'm going to keep praying for my people. And I'm upward bound. But my goal is to plant my feet on higher ground. You can put out on me whatever you want to put out on me. Talk about me all 
you to please. Call me everything but a child of God. But at the end of the day, after all been said and done, I'm still moving forward with what God has for me. But wait a minute now, I got one more thing. Uh, when God separates you from old relationships, you know what? God will replace them with new relationships. God help me today. And those new relationships will be more beneficial to you. God Almighty. Look at verse 3. Notice that Jonathan made a covenant with David in verse 3. Jonathan said because he loved him as his, his own soul. Then in verse 4, he says, Jonathan took off his robe, gave it to David, took off his tunic, even his sword, bow and belt. You know what, y'all just miss your shout. I'm going to help you though. I'm going to help you and then I'm going to sit down. Listen, listen. David lost his family, but he gained a friend. Because really, in David's family, he didn't have any friends. Are y'all in here? You remember when Samuel first came to Bethlehem to anoint David as king? David's father thought so little of David that he wouldn't even bring David out before Samuel without Samuel directing him to do it. Yeah, look, David's brothers thought so little of him that when David went to visit them on the battlefield, they disrespected him in front of folk. So David had a family. He had folk with the same name, but they didn't have David's heart. But how they know that God would never take anything from you without replacing it with something better? Yeah. yeah, yeah, God places folk in your life strategically uh -huh. so they can help you get to the place that God is taking you to. Amen. Look at the text. I'm almost through. Jonathan offered David his armor. Uh -huh. But understand that King Saul had previously offered David his armor, but David would not take it. Y'all right. remember that? But here there in the text, David took the armor that Jonathan offered. Yeah. And I want to tell you, as I get ready to sit down, is that God strategically places folk in your life yeah. at the right time. Yeah. Good God. You see, you were not ready to receive at the last level because it wasn't the right one trying to give it to you. David got the same thing that Saul offered, but this time he got it from the right person. And the reason so many saints get so messed up is because they're getting the right stuff, but you're getting it from the wrong person. And God wants you to be mature enough to say no to what you want until he sends the right one to give it to you. Oh, I know I'm through now. But the enemy will always send folk to you to drag you down. They got the right stuff. Yeah, they're in the right place. They look good. They sound good. But don't be fooled by the title. Don't be tricked by the intellect. But rather, wait on God. Wait on Him for His guidance. Wait on God. For his instruction. Be mature enough to wait on the Lord because the enemy will entice you with the things you want. But that's all right. It comes with the assignment. And you got to be mature enough to refuse it while you wait on God. But the Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They'll walk and not faint. Is there anybody 
in higher calling today who ain't too proud to admit. Amen. I say, I'm glad that I serve a God who loves me enough to place somebody in my life that's beneficial to me. Somebody that will pray for me. Somebody who will encourage me when I get down. Is there anybody in here today who can say, I thank God for this woman of God. Come on here. You came here to celebrate with us. Is there anybody who can say, I thank God for Reverend Jenkins who has been trained to lay hands on the sick, who's been trained to pray for you, a woman of God who's been equipped to recognize your pain, a woman of God who knows your stuff and still won't judge you, a woman of God who is discerning enough to, that, that no matter what you're going through, when it's all been said and done, she just reassures you, gives you a pat on the back and a word in your ear. Ain't God a good God? A woman of God who will tell you that you can make it because the great one is on the inside. Ain't a good God? A woman of God who preaches truth and who teaches from the word of God. And that is the woman that we are ordained. And I don't know about you, but I thank God for her assignment. I'm going to stop right there. Let me throw your hands up and celebrate God in here today. Come on and shout hallelujah for this woman of God. Now look, the door of the church is open. And Jesus is called. And he said, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. He said, though your sins are scarlet, I'll wash you whiter than snow. I'm going to ask you to stand all over the building. If there's someone here today who's not saved, will you come give your life to Jesus? Christ don't give us a short song. A short song. <laughs> While well, you deliberate, will you come?
Say amen again. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Yeah. Amen. The enemy wants to mess stuff up, don't huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, too many believers in here. Yeah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Yeah. That's what we thank God for our new believers. Amen. Yeah. New converts. To God be the glory. Amen. And you know what? It's a wonderful thing 
Amen. To come and ordain Reverend Jenkins. That's a wonderful, Amen. wonderful thing. But nothing, nothing trumps. Amen. Amen. A soul giving their life to the Lord. Glory to God. God, amen, for them. Now, this time, we're going to move on, amen, uh, to the ordination. Amen. To God be the glory. Reverend Jenkins, if you would. I will charge you, Reverend Jenkins, if you'll come on. <laughs> I shall charge you with the words of the Apostle Paul from 2 Timothy. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap up themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Further, I charge you to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word truth. Lastly, Continue instant in prayer. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And bear in mind that the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And that everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Let the church say amen. amen. Reverend Jenkins, I want to give you your ministerial assignment at this time. Amen? Amen. You've been called by God to go and preach the gospel to every creature. To this end, you have faithfully served that higher calling, working closely with and giving your full support to your pastor and to the membership of this church. Your ministerial education and training has focused on preaching, church administration, and pastoral support. Therefore, it is fitting that your ministry assignment be that of evangelism and pastor secretary here at Higher Calling Baptist Church. Please note that I said pastor secretary and not church secretary. Amen. 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 The Higher Calling Baptist Church's vision for your ministry is that you will provide support for the pastor through performing all duties of secretary and to preach and teach when assigned and to assist in the facilitation of outreach events. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Reverend Jenkins, you have been assigned the office and work of evangelism, church administration. Do you pledge before God in this assembly to fulfill the official responsibilities and expectations that come with that assignment to the best of your ability as God gives you grace and under the direction of your pastor? Please answer, I do. I do. Do you pledge your faithfulness to daily and diligent prayer and study that you may hear the voice of the Lord which will keep you prepared for ministry events? in support of the pastoral office and of higher calling according to God's will and the vision of the church? Please answer, I do. I do. Do, it, do you acknowledge the rightful authority of the higher calling Baptist church and its pastor? And do you promise to discharge the duties of your office faithfully under the supervision of the pastor and the executive board and to show all proper regard for his policies and ordinances and render all suitable obedience to his governance in the Lord? Please answer, I do. I do. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
Hi, I'm calling Baptist Church. Would you please stand? Hi, I'm calling Reverend Sherry Jiggs has met the academic and training requirements for ordination as prescribed by this church. Therefore, I charge you simply to give her your prayerful support as she performs her assigned duties and carry out the ministry that she has been called and assigned to. I beseech you, how I call it, to know them which labor among you and esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Find how I call it, I charge you to render unto Reverend Sherry Jenkins all the respect and the honor that an ordained minister of the gospel of High Calling Baptist Church is entitled. Please say amen. 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 Say amen again. Amen. God be glory. You may be seated. 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 Now, Reverend Jenkins, if you will return. Now, under the watchful eye of the one who is the faithful witness, Jesus the Christ, and upon the recommendation of the High Calling Ministerial Alliance ordaining council, by the authority bestowed upon me by the Godhead as pastor of the High Calling Baptist Church and as the presiding prelate for the High Calling Ministerial Alliance, I do hereby ordain Reverend Sherry Jenkins. May God bless the work of her heart and her hands. Yes. To God be the glory. At this time, we will have laying on of hands led by Pastor Patricia. I ask that all high calling ministers please come to the front. All high calling deacons please come to the front to assist Pastor Wood. Deacon, you can see the chair right there.
Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. Stay right here. Amen. We ain't through with you yet. <laughs> amen. To God be the glory. We, amen, we thank God. Let me say before we do these presentations, amen, we thank God for this preacher. Amen. I'm going to tell you something about her, amen, that I am particularly pleased with is that uh, I could call her on Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock and she's at work and say, Sherry, I cannot teach Bible study. And do you think that she say, well, I can't do it either? <laughs> Never once. Not once. She always is prepared. Amen. She stays prepared. Amen. And that is a blessing. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Now, now, as we start the presentation, I asked Deacon Janet Underwood, she will come and she will present the Bible after her. Deacon Belinda MacPhail shall come and present the hymnal. Reverend Jacob, this is your certificate of ordination. It says, we do understand upon the recommendation and request of the High Calling Baptist Church at Wilson, North Carolina, which had full and sufficient opportunity for judging the God-given gifts and after satisfactory examination by us in regard to the Christian experience, call to ministry, and views of the Bible doctrine, hereby certify that Reverend Sherry Jenkins was solemnly and publicly set apart and ordained to the work of the gospel ministry by authority and order of the High Calling Ministerial Alliance at Wilson, North Carolina on the 20th day of January 2024. Which means she's had, we've had this since January. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. So she's been, she's been acting like she wasn't ordained. But she really was. Ordain. Amen. God bless you. All right. I'm going to ask uh, Pastor William Bush. He is the pastor of uh, my father's business Christian church. If he would come make remarks after him, Dr. Priscilla Williams from Word Empowerment Church in Durham. And then Dr. Earl Wooten, Senior Pastor of the Mary Grove Missionary Baptist Church in Lucala. In that order, please. Amen. Turn that mic on, please. You got to pull it down because you're kind of short. <laughs> Yeah. 
Bible tells me I'm home. <laughs> now, what you get when you're home? This is my sister, and from the moment I got here, we connected. And she's been so dear to me, and this is well-deserved today. But I got to say, before she was even conceived in her mother's womb, God had already ordained her for such a time as this. And we thank God for this sister because right now I, bar I borrowed Pastor's uh, secretary right now and then I said, Sherry, can you help me? Sure. <laughs> so that's the kind of person she is. She, and in her catechism, mm, I never seen anybody ace it the way she aced it. <coughs> she knows, she knows what to do, she knows how to do it, and she knows how to be humble. And the thing I like to say to you is, on my way to back to my seat is, the same thing that got you where you are, you continue to stay humble that God might exalt you in due season. This man right here is still your pastor. Amen. Amen. As long as you stay in the will of God, there's no height that you can't reach. Amen. 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 I'm still here, yes, by the grace of God. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. I give honor to your leader. Amen. Dr. Wooten, to his lovely wife, Lady Wooten, to all of the leadership that is here. Amen. Um, to family, and I'm seeing family all up in here myself. <laughs> amen. To our co-workers. I don't know if we have, you want me to? Amen. We're going to ask all of our co-workers from Colin Aerospace to please stand. Amen. In representation. Amen. I've been knowing Miss Sherry for a pretty good while, and I call her Miss Sherry, so please, no disrespect, amen. But I honor you and I respect you for where you are. Um, as I was preparing for the remarks, um, I heard God say, stand on your foundation. Whatever you started, your foundation is where you will always end up. Um, in the good times, in the bad times, in the times when you don't know nowhere to go, your foundation still stands strong. So it's in those weary nights when your husband can't really fit and find and, and help you or when your children can't fit or find that place that you really need, your foundation is there. My hymn, though, is tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Mm, amen. Because I trust in him right where I am, regardless of where you are right now. It is he that is standing with you. You see all the people that are here with you right now. They won't be with you always. They are being, there are some of you that will be praying for her. There are some of you that may not be praying for her. I'm just one of those. And I've been in this a little right now going on 30 years. And I've seen the good, the bad, and most definitely the ugly. But as a woman of God, I encourage you to stand on what you believe and who you trust in. Because there are those that's going to be with you that got your front and your back. But then there are those who won't have neither side. But trust in God. Know that he would never leave you. There is a, a scripture I was listening, I was reading, and it's saying that you can have silver and gold and all the other precious pieces, but it's what you have on the inside that would manifest on the outside. And it's the fire of God that when you open your mouths and deliver the word of the Lord, wherever you are, whether you here, there, or across the country, God is with you. Let the fire of God fill you. Never leave his side. He's always with you. Even when he doesn't feel like it, he's there. Stand strong, my sister, my friend. Amen. I am so proud of you, and I grace God. Stand as a graceful woman of God, wherever you are. Integrity and understanding that he is your maker. God bless you. Amen. Amen. My song said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Yeah. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. 
we do give honor to God for how you're being. Thank God for a mighty word from my pastor. Thank God for you. Amen. I'm just so proud of you. <laughs> um, just watching you grow. Um, I've seen such growth over the last five, six, seven years. And just see what God has done in your life. I am, you know, as a big brother, younger but big brother, I'm so proud of you. And, and my remark, I'm, I'm, I'm through already, but my, my remark comes from um, Psalms 126. I'm, I'm going to shut up. Uh, but it says, When the Lord turned again, captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed. Then with our mouth filled with laughter, our tongue was singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord had done great things. Verse 3 says, The Lord has done great things for us. Where we are glad. Mm -hmm. Amen. Reverend Jenkins, the Lord has done great things. Amen. Whereof we, we are glad. glad. We are glad. Amen. God bless you. I love you. And God bless you. Praise the Lord. Reverend Jenkins, I thank God for you. I think we met first in 2014, amen. Um, we worked together. And from that day to now, you know, you have a special place in my heart. And I just thank God for, you know, I told you before you even came, she joined in 2018, 2014, I'm sorry. And I, we said God has a higher calling for your life. And we thank you, praise God, through your, you continue to have a pure heart, continue to have a live a holy life and God has a yet higher calling for your life. Uh, we love you here and we're grateful and we're thankful for everything that you have already done and we just pray that God continue to bless you to do even more greater works. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let the church say amen. Amen. Now my way of remarks me. Amen. Amen. I think I've said enough. Amen. But I am very grateful. Amen. Uh, when our uh, assistant pastor passed away, she left a big hole in our ministry, which Reverend Jenkins has done all she can to feel. And she has done a marvelous Job. Amen. But that is not why we ordained her. Amen? Amen? Amen. But we are saying to you, Reverend Jenkins, continue with what you are doing. Amen. Amen. And God will take you where he needs for you to be. Let the church say amen. amen. Now to those of you who are here, uh, ministers of the gospel, who are very good friends of Reverend Jenkins, are very good supporters. We thank God for your presence. I cannot let everybody talk. I got to go home. Yeah. Yeah. So if your name ain't on the program, Pastor Luke said to you, thank you for your prayers and your support for this preacher. Can the church say amen? amen. Now receive Reverend Jenkins as she comes for her remarks. Come on, receive her with a clap. Lord Almighty God, 
don't deserve it. <laughs> oh, Father God, I thank you for it. I give honor to my pastor, Dr. John Melvin Wooten, and Dr. Pastor Patricia, Pastor Patricia Wooten. Lord Almighty God, I give honor to them. I give honor to all the ministerial that are in the great, that grace is this house today, Lord. Everybody that's in ministry, all the pastors and all the ministers in faith, and Lord, I thank you. All the friends and family, Lord, my babies, praise God. My babies are in the house. And my God, baby. Okay, a lot of people hear me say my daughters and my sons and I, you only got two children, but let me tell you. Through my two children, I have a lot of God children. All right? If you're my child that I call my child or my daughter, you stay. Amen. Amen. That I call my children. I call them my children so they don't feel hurt, harm, or danger to call me anytime. Anytime of the day or night, they call me. So I thank God for them. I thank God for my, my aunt, praise God, and make sure that my family being in the house, praise God, she's still with me. I thank God for her. My cousin coming with her. I thank God for my sisters in the house. Praise God, my sisters and my brother-in-law. My stepmother made it. <laughs> Praise God. I thank God for my co-workers. You know what, guys? You know I love y'all. God knows I love y'all. I cry to God in a thing in the world. The devil had to kill me not to do anything for y'all. But I love y'all. My co-workers didn't feel it any, they didn't feel, they, they automatically said they would be here. You know, they didn't question. You know, they said, just said, I'm here. And I thank God that they came. I think because they see God in me, that's what I, I thank God for. Amen. Amen. The stand for my animal, wrong, I, I can't, I can go on and name you all, but I thank God for you. Praise God. And ask that you continue. Lord Almighty God, take your charge serious. Praise God. My walk is very serious to me. My walk is very serious to me. Praise God. And everybody here that knows me know it don't have, it's not a problem to pray for you. It's not a problem to give you the encouragement that you need to go on. Because that's what I believe. I believe in a God that can do all things. I believe in a God that can do anything. Praise God. I believe a God, if it's in his will, he can move that mountain. Amen. Amen. So y'all stay encouraged and be encouraged and keep me in your prayers. And I thank you. First and foremost, praise God, I will continually thank my pastor, Dr. John Melvin Wu. Praise God. And under his under his ministry, praise God, that he is he has instilled upon me great, great wisdom. He, is just, he opened up the, the, the key to the knowledge of God for me. Praise God. And I thank him. I can never repay him for that. And for all the ministers in the house, praise God, that I have sought in your service. I, yeah, I reek from all of y'all. I do. And I write it down and I, I be trying not to steal it. But, <laughs> but I thank God that y'all, you enrich me. You didn't reach me. My big brother's sitting over there. Praise God. Lean back. They didn't lean back. They're my brothers. My biggest brother that has done been the earmark on every occasion, special occasion that I, I have had. He's never denied me. I thank God for all the high calling Baptist church. Praise God. The love that you've shown, the love that you've shown me, I hope and pray that I can live up to it. So y'all keep me in your prayers. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. I don't know how y'all pastors do, but have you ever noticed when pastors get up, everybody's trying to talk to them? <laughs> You don't know what 
really talking about. But anyway, ain't God a good God? My humble child. Oh. I give honor to him above all. He is my biggest supporter. He is my confidant. Lift me up when I'm down. Mr. Lewin L. Jenkins. Brother Earl, big man, everybody's friend. I want him to know I do appreciate him. He is my best friend. No wonder he will whistle. I bet you that it'll be a long time before uh, Berlin ever say anything about long years. Uh, to God be the glory. Again, we thank God for all of you who are here today. To be a blessing, amen, to Reverend Jenny. We thank God, amen, for Pastor William Bush, Dr. Priscilla Williams, Dr. Earl Wood, Reverend Patricia Wood. Thank God for our Reverend our Pastor Tawanda Moore, amen, and the High Calling Ministerial Alliance. Amen. Thank God for Reverend Valerie Jones, amen, and my son, yes. Reverend Ted Jeff. Thank God for him. Amen. My little brother, Dr. Earl Wu, is here. Amen. And I got to say, he never misses any important function Amen. that we have. Amen. Amen. That's a brother and a friend. Yes. To God be the glory. We are grateful. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, let me say there is food in the fellowship hall. For those of you who are like me and starving, uh, there's food over there. Get a box. You can sit over there and eat, or you can take it away with you. Amen. 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 And and uh, Reverend Jenkins really wants you to go over there and get it. She don't want it to be left over there because then she's gonna have to clean it up. Amen. Amen. We're just joking. All, right, all hearts and minds are clear. We're gonna stand and be dismissed. We're gonna let this choir close us out with a song. Yeah, just give us just give us a little bit of that one way where Alice was singing while ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sunday day. Sunday day. That's just a tad of.
our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, love of God and the communion of the Spirit, rest rule in the Bible. It was hit forth now and forever. Let us say amen. 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 amen.